Coming up on today's show, well, quite a lot actually, Mercedes have a big launch event yesterday for their new full electric city bus range. Volkswagen expand their roadmap E. China's CATL confirm their first battery factory in Germany. And you can now configure a Tesla Model 3. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, the 11th of July edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Boy, it's another hot one here today. Some people occasionally, because this show started out as a podcast, then the audio went on YouTube as well, and that's got really popular, and uh, mildly popular, and people sometimes say, you should do this in vision, turn the cameras on. I'm sitting here today in a pair of shorts and nothing else. It is roasting in the UK right now. We are not built for 30 degree heat. So the windows and doors are all open in the studio. So if you can hear the birds in the trees in the background, apologies for the background noise. But man, it is too hot today to have the windows and doors closed. Do we have air conditioning? No, we don't need it. And once every five or ten years it gets hot here and boy it's another hot one but we'll get to some comments from our australian listeners at the end of the uh, the show today and especially the ones from brisbane will be laughing right now going it's not that hot trust me well an update on a story i mentioned briefly yesterday with so many news outlets confirming it i feel more comfortable talking about the news today and that is the nissan motor company according to bloomberg saying it's now going to investigate instances of misconduct involving falsified data around exhaust emissions and fuel economy. The second controversy in less than a year for Nissan, whose vehicle inspection scandal led to the recall of about 1.2 million vehicles. Now, the data falsification occurred on 19 models across five plants in Japan. During the checks, Nissan found out that employees had misrepresented temperature and humidity data in the testing chamber, manipulated emission data on carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, And now Nissan's hired a law firm to investigate the matter further, says Bloomberg. So I'll leave it there. Now it's in the hands of the lawyers because I need to be very careful what I say not to get myself in trouble. My heart kind of sinks because Nissan holds a really special place in any EV fan, whether you like the Nissan Leaf or not, or the ENV200 or the e-power cars they make. They have the world's biggest selling EV. Over 300,000 models of the Leaf have been sold, and they, in many ways, uh, put their money where their mouth was and took the risk and really moved EVs forward. And so it kind of is heartbreaking that Nissan now have been caught up in carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and emissions. I won't call it scandal, uh, but testing irregularities. And with things like fines in America for other car makers, it's... um, Oh man, it's just it's just such a, a bad thing for any car manufacturer to, to have to admit to, but it's just another name on the list. Well, let's get into the big news of the podcast today. We're going to get into all of the meat on this one. We knew it was coming, a matter of when, not if, because we've had it confirmed many times, and Elon's talked about it over the years. But it's confirmed now that Tesla are building their first factory outside of the US and it will be in Shanghai, the city government announced. Well, the Wall Street Journal said the electric car maker will be setting up a plant with an annual capacity of 500,000 vehicles. And the Shanghai authorities said in a statement that the Tesla chief exec Elon Musk had been in Shanghai to sign a memorandum of cooperation with the mayor, Ying Yong. But why build a factory in China? And why build one in Shanghai? Once Tesla Shanghai, as this new company, I guess we will call it, is now named Tesla Shanghai, is going to be the owner of the new Gigafactory when it's at capacity building half a million cars for the Chinese market without paying the new import duties, which only in the last couple of days have added 20% on the price of Model S and Model X cars. Plus, because they'll be able to make cars cheaper in China. What do you think? Maybe they'll make the base Model 3 there. Maybe they'll make the base Model Y there uh, to lower the costs and increase their margins. We know that Fremont is full space-wise. We know that they want to increase the capacity of Fremont, but basically it's full. And Elon said that he, I've always said that the Model Y won't be built at Fremont. Well, in the last week of Q1, they made 7,000 cars. That is 5,000 Model 3s and uh, 2,000 of the S and the X. If they did that for 52 weeks of the year, they'd be making 364,000 cars. 
at Fremont every single year, but we know they have their eyes on 10,000 Model 3s every single week as the eventual target. Well, if you add on to that a couple of thousand Model S a Model X, and you say they're making 12,000 vehicles every single week in Fremont, will they ever do that? I mean, that's the plan. If you multiply that by, say, 50 weeks of the year for two weeks of shutdowns, that's 600,000 cars at Fremont. I always thought the capacity of Fremont was half a million. So basically, Tesla have at least doubled, with this announcement, doubled their worldwide production capacity. And they said in a statement to Bloomberg that we expect construction to begin in the very near future after we get the necessary approvals and permits. From there, it'll take two years until we start producing vehicles and then another two to three years before we're ramped up to half a million million vehicles per year for Chinese customers, they say. Well, Tesla is deeply committed to the Chinese market, and we look forward to building even more cars, they say, for our customers here. Today's announcement will not impact US manufacturing operations, which continue to grow. And that was Tesla's statement. Well, Tesla's Lone car assembly plant in Fremont, California, where it's so far built 88,000 cars in the first half of this year. And it has a the big gigafactory one in Nevada. After moving ahead in China, they now want to look towards Europe. Towards the end of this year, Elon said recently that they will confirm the first European gigafactory location. The first of ultimately nine gigafactories around the world to make the cars as local as possible so that you can get the best possible price on a car that's made somewhere near you. And although this isn't a financial podcast, yes, the share price, the stock price did go up on the announcement, and I never pretend to understand the finer subtleties of a balance sheet, but Tesla currently has $2.7 billion in cash at hand at the end of Q2 2018, uh, with a plan for the Model 3 to become profitable sometime between now and the end of the year, the calendar year. China before has been an investor in Tesla with Tencent Holdings spending $1.8 billion to buy a 5% stake in Tesla Uh, in March 2017. So will we see more Chinese investment in Tesla? Will they go back to those markets to try and raise more money? Or will they just try and do it bit by bit, gradual investment over the next five years with the money that they'll be making from selling the Model 3? That's the headlines. I could go into way more detail on that. We'll save that for another show because there's lots more news to come today. At a major launch event yesterday, Mercedes revealed their all-electric e Citaro bus. They said the powertrain has electric motors at the wheel hubs. Lithium-ion batteries are going to be powering the Mercedes buses with a total capacity of 243 kilowatt hours providing the power with current technology. That range, about 150 k's, which will get, they said, about a quarter of all the bus journeys that are done at the moment done in a day. Uh, They're modular in design intentionally. So the batteries are then split between 10 modules, each one supplying around 25 kilowatt hours, two battery modules, modules on the roof and the standard equipment including four in the rear of the bus in the e Citaro, they're taking the place of the powertrain the combustion engine and the transmission now depending on customer requirements you can add two or four battery models mo- modules on the roof extra and these are the prismatic cells by the way if you're interested in that kind of side of it that they're using well mercedes-benz are going to be cooling the batteries of their buses to remain uh, at the ideal temperature they say ensuring maximum charging capacity you can use the chargers at the depot and they're gonna have options for the pantograph charging Uh, technique the service life of these is going to be increased because of thermal management the cooling is going to be undertaken by a separate battery cooler also mounted on the roof at extreme outside temperatures the passenger compartment climate control system will also be used to cool and heat the batteries well they see an upgrade path to battery technology increasing. And this is the key thing I want to get to on the podcast today. They say, Mercedes said yesterday, transport operators can increase the range of their existing e Citaro buses by swapping out batteries at any later time as we increase operational flexibility. So Mercedes clearly catching up there with battery technology, seeing how quickly battery tech, the prices are coming down and the tech is getting better. And they're designing it in a way that if they're fleet operators that buy hundreds and thousands, you would think of these buses from Mercedes, are future-proofing themselves. And it gets better. 
this was a surprise to me to see Mercedes talking about this. Solid state batteries was a part of their presentation yesterday. They will offer a 30% increase from the 20... 243 kilowatt hour capacity I mentioned a moment ago to a 400 kilowatt hour capacity from 2020 with a solid state battery option for the Mercedes buses. However, because the design of these is going to be different, you won't be able to swap out the existing batteries for the solid states, though. Uh, it's going to be sold as a different range of buses. It was a big presentation, a lot of surprises in there, and Mercedes Daimler getting super serious about public e transit amazing fantastic news and some real future talk in there as well with new battery technology well two days ago on monday the 9th of july volkswagen group china signed a memorandum a memorandum of understanding with jac and sayat they did it in Berlin to establish a new R&D, Research and Development Center, and it's going to focus on developing electric vehicles and connectivity and autonomous driving technologies, as well as a platform for pure battery electric vehicles for the Chinese market. Sayat, as a brand, will be introduced to China for the first time in 2020 and 2021. Now, this new memorandum of understanding is going to play a key role in Volkswagen Group's e-mobility plan in China. In order to meet the demands of Chinese customers, they say, together with JAC and Sayat, Volkswagen Group China is going to establish this R&D center. It's going to develop electric vehicles, and it's going to be tailored all towards the Chinese market. Things like relevant parts and components and core technologies. It's going to be ready for 2021 and Volkswagen taking the Chinese market super seriously and from that to the next story Chinese battery maker Contemporary Amperex Technology Limited we'll call them CATL just for speed um, will build its first ever production site in Europe in Germany announced yesterday at a major contract signing with BMW they're going to supply lithium-ion batteries according to the Reuters report which adds a little bit more to what we've talked about with the rumours of this story finally all got signed off. A new contract says Reuters to build the new plant signed on Monday during a visit to Germany by the Chinese Premier. Around 240 million euros, that's about 380 million US dollars, is going to be invested in phase one. Wolfgang TFN say, I think that's the name. Uh, he is the Minister of Economic Affairs in the region the factory is going to be built, uh, told journalists that BMW plans to source 4 billion euros worth of battery cells from CATL over the next few years for BMW cars, with 1.5 billion euros coming from the new site in Erfurt in eastern Germany. Uh, the car maker's purchasing lead, his name is Marcus Deussmann, told us uh, CATL is the world's largest maker of battery cells for EVs and the new factory is simply step one in Europe there's a lot more to come according to businesstimes.com.sg now the CATL factory is going to make 600 new jobs and reach production of 14 gigawatt hours in the next four years by 2022 CATL reached shipments of uh, shipments of 12 gigawatt hours alone last year well Talking of BMW's purchasing head, Marcus Deussmann, he also added the BMW's invested some of the costs for the CATL factory in Erfurt, but didn't say how much. And that reminds me of Tesla building the Giga factory for Panasonic to use. It's working so closely with a provider for scale, for technology, and not just having a customer relationship. Deussmann also said that BMW's investing in battery cell research, but a decision on whether to produce battery cells themselves is still not being made. But it could be. I don't rule it out, he says. BMW is very comfortable with currently having two suppliers of battery cells, but could add a third and is in talks with eight manufacturers, he added. So that's interesting as well as the way that Tesla and Panasonic are working in bed together, but I would say very closely. BMW doing that with CATL, more than just a supplier-customer relationship. BMW investing in the factory, investing in cell research, and selling that technology to other car makers. So BMW not wanting to be left behind, wanting to be definitely inside the party, inviting other people in for a charge. Well, back to Tesla, and LA Times is reporting that anyone can now access the Model 3 online configurator and lay down a non-refundable 
Three and a half thousand dollar cash payment. The delivery date of your Model 3 will then be determined after you've paid Tesla and the money's been transferred. Well, I tried it here from the UK a little while ago with my US VPN connected. Not because I ever watch US TV shows with the VPN. I would never do that, obviously. I, uh, I tried it earlier and it wasn't updated. The Tesla.com site hadn't been updated uh, when I tried it. Now, if you want to have a little go, see if the Model 3 configurator is now open for you to try, like you can do with, you can build your own SNX on the site. Not that I've done that only about a bazillion times to make my perfect combination of something I can't afford. Well, the stated waited time for a Model 3 uh, is either almost immediate if you want certain things like the performance model and the all-wheel drive, the dual motor, to as much as nine months if you simply want a $35,000 base price version, which Elon, by the way, a lot of people are very cynical about this because they're lazy journalists. Elon has confirmed many times will happen in Q1 next year. They will make the base model, but the company needs to make money and there's bigger margins on performance and dual motor. Each customer will be told individually about your specific delivery date once you've paid your three and a half thousand cash payment which some people are up in arms because they see it as an increase over the thousand dollar refundable deposit that you had to pay up until now but tesla replied to a request for comment with this tesla has always required this amount of deposit for all of its vehicle orders on model s and x given that we build cars to customers specifications that deposit goes towards the purchase price of the vehicle and that was their quote. We heard at the start of July when Tesla confirmed that they'd made the 5,000 Model 3s that week. Uh, the official number of outstanding orders at that time was 420,000 Model 3s still to be made. Well, DHL, the official logistics partner of Formula E, as Formula E heads to New York, is offering New Yorkers a free e-shuttle service and who doesn't love something for free? Well, you can get a free shuttle from key locations across Manhattan this week in an effort to reinforce the global logistic company's commitment to sustainability and e-mobility. Well, DHL's teamed up with Nissan and got some really funky, painted, liveried Nissan Leafs ahead of the E-Pre this weekend. They've got 14 Nissan Leafs available for the public. You can take some free rides in the Leafs. Uh, the shuttle starts today, July the 11th through July 13th, in the lead-up to the New York City E-Pre uh, in Red Hook, Brooklyn, this weekend. The service is going to be offered from 10 till 4 at three different locations around New York. Enjoy that if you see one waiting. Go and get your free lift somewhere. Uh, the service is open to members of the public. You need to download the DHL Mobility Quest app first. Well, Skoda is to make a performance variant of its upcoming all-electric model based on the Vision E concept from last year's Frankfurt Motor Show and should be on sale by the end of 2020. Tim Pollard, writing for the always excellent car magazine here in the UK, reports that Skoda is working on a range of performance EVs, loosely dubbed ERS, to indicate the EV equivalent of the Czech companies. VRS Go Faster brand. Well, global sales and marketing chief Alan Favey told Car Magazine that Skoda is planning performance spin-offs of its future EVs, which are now in development and ready to launch from next year. First up is the E City Go. Basically, it's a Skoda branded Volkswagen E Up, uh, due for launch next year, late next year. Uh, this is just the warm up, though, for the main event. He says uh, the new bespoke EV crossover is due later in 2020, and it's going to be the first to get Skoda's ERS derivatives. Now, I used to have a Skoda Octavia VRS, uh, an estate one, uh, which is kind of wagon, depending on where you're listening around the world. Uh, the one with the long boot. And it's the one that the police drive here on the motorways because they can get all their police gear in the back. But holy moly, I had that for a couple of years and that was a fast, fast car. It's the only Skoda that I've owned. But my goodness, that VRS was a quick car, especially for one with a very long boot. Four-wheel drive as well. Holy moly, I'm reminiscing now. That was a great car, but sadly before EVs were available. They say that when it finally launches, obviously 2020, they know the technology is improving. 300-mile range is their target, and that design is going to be consistent with regular Skodas as well. Access to fast charging, which they're putting in at their dealers, and a new kind of floating instrument panel and the latest connectivity, according to Favi. And that's exciting because Skoda, of course, part of VW, but not their premium brand like Sayat. So you get a lot of car for not as much money. 
Well, staying with VW, and hardly content with shattering the all-time record at Pikes Peak, v- uh, Volkswagen wants its IDR Pikes Peak electric racer to be the one to beat on other tracks. And now it's shipped the car from Pikes Peak to ooh, about 80 miles from where I'm sitting right now. It's bringing the racer to the Goodwood Festival of Speed in the south of England this week, with designs on setting not only the electric car record at the Goodwood Hill Climb, but maybe the overall benchmark according to N gadgets. Well, the Goodwood Festival of Speed will also mark the debut of VW's car in Europe, and it's also going to host the European, official European debut, I should say, there's been others, but the official Tesla debut of the Model 3. So I'll be at Goodwood on Friday, so maybe the podcast will be uh, a little late that day. I am a guest of a client, and I've just had a look at the schedule, and it does involve lunch and drinks, and it does involve dinner and drinks. So I won't say who I'm a who I'm a guest of, but all the big car manufacturers are going to be there. So I'm I'm very grateful and very lucky to be going just for the Friday. I know I'm enormously lucky to do that. However. Friday night's podcast, in other words, Saturday's podcast, I'll try not to be too slurry for it. Just, maybe just one glass of red wine with dinner. Maybe a beer. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Look, I guarantee you at some point when I'm not enjoying the hospitality, I'll be posting videos and pictures of the Tesla Model 3 that they've got on show and the VW uh, IDR Pikes Peak. They've got a gorgeous new BMW i8 and other EVs there as well. I can't wait uh, to hang out at Goodwood on Friday and bring you all of the latest. And finally, the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid continues to be the UK's best-selling plug-in electrified vehicle. Uh, sales of Mitsubishi Motors petrol electric plug-in uh, SUV totaled 537 units last month in June. Almost 4,000 sold this calendar year ahead of any other pure plug-in on the market uh, reported by Automotive World yesterday. Goodness, how have we got to 22 minutes so far? That's that's all the talk of me enjoying a free glass of wine. Now, uh, let's get on to a couple of comments that I want to talk about uh, that we had over the last couple of days that I didn't get to. The first one's from David Nye. We were talking about how Australia, it seems to me, I'm the other side of the world to Australia, seems to me that Australia's a little bit behind with Eve well, David Nye says, G'day, Martin, or G'day, Martin, love your show, stumbled across it by chance a week or two ago. He doesn't talk like that, nor does any Australian, and subscribed immediately as it's full of topical and unbiased information. I mean, I appreciate you saying that, David. Yeah, I'm uh, absolutely not paid by any vested interest to say one thing or the other, and I'm not saying nice things about cars to uh, review them either. So I, I, I'm glad you've spotted that. I never really say that about the podcast, but certainly I try and bring you it as I see it, and hopefully that's honest and truthful and unbiased. Well, he says, ever since ever since buying a 2014 Mitsubishi plug-in, my wife and I have been converts. We love driving pure EV. I've got to stop this accent. Well, the plug-in hybrids are like hen's teeth here in Australia. He says, no government incentives, no tax breaks, no dealer support to match. But on our recent trip to the UK, we saw them everywhere. We drove over 2,000 miles around the UK in May. Partly a result of buying the plug-in hybrid, and after test driving a Model S, we quickly put down a deposit on the Model 3. But just like you in the UK, it's a long wait for the right-hand drive version. Keep up the good work and good day from down under, says David Nye in uh, sunny Brisbane. Man, I would love to be in Brizzy. Uh, well, pretty much any other week of the year apart from when it is boiling hot here. Hi to Peter as well, says I'm a massive fan of your podcast. Uh, this is Peter Mooney, by the way, and he's been reading Auto Car Magazine, and it's annoyed him. He says that all the other car mags I'm used to reading are putting negative comments about EVs and making me not want to read them. This time, Auto Car being negative about autonomous driving. I know what you mean, Peter, but I think there are some that are okay. And I've raved about Car Magazine before here in the UK. I mentioned that their editor, Tim Pollard, a little while ago, that a couple of months ago, they actually put a Model 3 on their front cover, not one that Tesla gave them. They went to the US, is it Churro, the car hire scheme, and they hired their own Model 3 and did a big uh, splash inside all about it. And, you, you know, bearing in mind that there's 12 front covers a year, and if you get one of them wrong and it destroys a twelfth of your sales... Uh, that's that's a disaster for print magazines and so they're very they they're very careful of what they put on the front cover and car magazine just had a big picture of the tesla model 3 and that's how much they are supportive of EV. so i know some of them aren't but some of them really are as well and i'd stick up for them in that case and you know because getting the front page right the front cover when people see it on newsstands is just so important they're just not going to risk if it if it was a commercial risk uh to take so i 
I get exactly what you mean. And hi to um, Philip says, thank you very much for informing us. Uh, days and nights here in Canada. And thank you for uh, continuing to give the prices in Canadian dollars. I do I do whenever I can. I've got my little conversion calculator next to me. So I always try and do it. Pounds, euros, US dollars, Canadian dollars. And I, otherwise, I'd be here all day if I started doing it. Aussie dollars and, and things like that. And hi to Matt Gruby as well, who's also talking about Australia. And I forgot to get to your email earlier this week. I thought I'd drop you a line in relation to the slow take-up of renewables and EVs. Despite having more sunshine than you can poke a stick at, we have a phenomenal amount of coal in Australia and natural gas. And our government is addicted to export earnings from these. He sent me a link as well to a Guardian article about new coal-fired power stations going up in Australia. We have uh, crazy politicians calling for new coal power stations, he says. Uh, we import most of our petrol, no longer have an auto industry. Hyundai and Kia are the best-selling makes here in Australia. And I think the Ionique, he says, will be available late 2019 here. Matt, thank you so much for your email and telling us what life is like uh, down under in Aussie. If you want to get a hold of the podcast, by the way, you can email hello at evnewsdaily.com. Nine times out of ten, it's me at the end of that uh, email. Uh, it's hello at evnewsdaily.com. If you want to check out the blog, that is evnewsdaily.com. If you want to check out the podcasts on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, uh, if you do your music on Spotify, add your podcasts to there as well. Tune in, Stitcher, and the audio goes on YouTube as well. If you subscribe, well, why wouldn't you? Because it's free. And we all love free stuff. Plus, you get it first and automatically. And if in return... For all of this work that I do, you could leave a little rate and review. I know it's, I know you're busy, but if you can, it really helps out with the algorithms. If you have time to say hi on the social, search EV News Daily. Do have a wonderful day. Thank you for your time today. It's been a long one. I do know that you're busy. I will catch you tomorrow.